Hello and welcome to Fast and Factual. I'm Utsav Parekh and here are the top stories of the day. Hamas has said that it has accepted a Qatari Egyptian ceasefire proposal for Gaza. Senior Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh confirmed his approval in a call with Qatar's Prime Minister and Egypt's Intelligence Minister. The deal has reportedly been divided into three phases, each lasting for 42 days. It eventually seeks the complete halt of Israel's military actions in Gaza. However, Israel has said that the deal falls short of its expectations. The Israeli army has taken over the Gaza side of the Rafah border crossing. This is the sole crossing between Gaza and Egypt. Israeli tanks advanced into the area last night. Meanwhile, Israel is also pressing ahead with airstrikes on Rafah. Warplanes pounded residential buildings in the area. At least 12 people have reportedly been killed in the recent strikes. The Lebanon-based Hezbollah group has said that it carried out a drone attack against Israel yesterday. The drone hit the Israeli town of Metula. Hezbollah says it also fired dozens of rockets towards Israeli army positions. Meanwhile, Israel says it struck Hezbollah's military compounds in southern Lebanon. Columbia University in New York has cancelled its main graduation ceremony. This comes after weeks of pro-Palestine protests on campus. However, the university authorities say they will still hold smaller, school-based ceremonies to felicitate students. Rafael Grossi, the chief of the International Atomic Energy Agency, was in Iran yesterday. The UN nuclear watchdog chief met Iran's foreign minister, Hossein Amir Abdullah. The IAEA hopes to bolster its oversight of Tehran's atomic activities. After the meeting, Grossi suggested that Tehran should take steps to ab abide by a joint agreement made in March 2023. Russia has issued a warning to the UK. Moscow says it may target British military installments in Ukraine and abroad. That is if Ukraine uses British weapons to conduct strikes inside Russian territory. Russia's threat follows British Foreign Secretary David Cameron's remarks. Last week, Cameron said that Ukraine had the right to use British weapons to strike Russia. The United States and most European Union nations have boycotted Russian President Vladimir Putin's swearing-in ceremony. This is over his invasion of Ukraine. However, some European countries like France have sent a delegation. Putin is being sworn in for a new six-year term today. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz visited German troops stationed in Lithuania yesterday. He observed the military's live firing exercise during the visit. Last December, Lithuania and Germany signed an agreement. This marked the first permanent foreign deployment of German troops since World War II. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi voted in the country's general elections today. The Indian Prime Minister cast his vote from Gujarat's Ahmedabad city in the third phase of the polls. He flaunted, flaunted his inked finger after casting his vote. A judge in the US has threatened former President Donald Trump with jail again. This is over Trump's violation of a gag order relating to his hush money case. Trump was once again held in contempt of court for his violations yesterday. He was charged $1,000 for the 10th violation of his gag order. Argentina's president, Javier Millet, was fawning over his friend, Elon Musk. Millet met Musk at the sidelines of a conference in Los Angeles yesterday. While speaking at the conference, Millet said, and I quote, I can't help but celebrate my friend's effort to set foot on Mars. Earlier, Musk had shown his admiration for Millet's reforms in Argentina. 
At least 11 people have been killed in a bus accident in southern Peru. Another 14 were injured after the bus went off the road and overturned. The cause of the accident is not yet known. This comes just a week after a bus fell into a river in Peru, leading to the deaths of 25 people. In South Africa, at least five people died after a multi-story building that was under construction collapsed. Rescue teams are searching for survivors as nearly 50 remain trapped in the rubble. At least 24 people have been rescued from the debris and taken to a hospital. The cause of the incident is being investigated. Moving to climate news, the Kenyan government says that floods in the country have affected over 210,000 people. Over 200 people have been killed due to the floods. At least 160 people are still missing. Kenyan authorities have set up camps to host people who have lost their homes. Meanwhile, floodwaters continue to wreak havoc in southern Brazil. Local authorities fear that they might run out of food and wa drinking water soon. The deluge started last week and has killed at least 85 people so far. Nearly 150,000 people have been forced to leave their homes. However, reports say that the intensity of the rain is decreasing. A spring storm brought record snow to the Sierra Nevada mountains in the U.S. The region witnessed unusually harsh, uh, harsh snow for the month of May. Some areas of Sierra Nevada received at least 60 centimeters of snow. Several highways were closed due to treacherous driving conditions. Experts from the Ohio State University in the U.S. have made a forecast. They say that the end of this year's El Nino might bring more tornadoes to the U.S. The states of Oklahoma and Nebraska could be particularly affected. The El Nino is a weather phenomenon that occurs every few years. This year's El Nino is due to end soon in the U.S. A massive fire broke out in Bangladesh's Sundarbans Reserve Forest last week. Firefighters teamed up with locals to combat the blaze. Trenches were dug up in several places to prevent the fire from spreading. The efforts have worked and the fire has now been extinguished. The Sundarbans are the world's largest mangrove forest and home to the endangered Royal Bengal Tiger. China says its top climate envoy will be in the U.S. from May 7th to May 16th. Chinese climate envoy Liu Zhenmin will meet his American counterpart, John Podesta. They will discuss how the two countries can achieve practical results in combating global warming. The World Bank says that changing farming practices could cut almost one-third of all global greenhouse gas emissions. An official said that to protect our planet, we need to transform the way we produce and consume food. The measures include changes like moving to low-emission livestock practices and using land sustainably. Almost a third of all greenhouse gas emissions worldwide come from the agri-food industry. On to business and tech news. The electric vehicle giant Tesla has reportedly started another round of layoffs. Elon, the Elon Musk-led firm is cutting jobs in units like software, services and engineering. This comes as Tesla has been struggling with a sharp decline in sales. Last month, the automaker laid off about 10% of its total workforce. Just weeks later, Tesla eliminated its entire electric car charging team. The British self-driving car startup, Wave, has raised over $1 billion in funding. The fundraiser was led by Japan's tech investment giant, SoftBank. America's Microsoft and NVIDIA have also invested in this funding round. Wave is working on self-driving technology that uses artificial intelligence to help the cars navigate. The Swiss bank UBS has reported its first profits after completing the acquisition of Credit Suisse last year. UBS earned nearly $1.8 billion in profit for the first quarter of this year. The lender said its wealth management and investment bank unit saw strong growth. UBS had reported losses in the last two quarters. This was after it took over Credit Suisse last June. 
The American trading platform Robinhood has said that it received a notice from the U.S. market regulator. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission is planning to take action against Robinhood's cryptocurrency platform. The SEC will likely shut down the platform or restrict its operations. This comes as the regulator seeks to expand its oversight over the digital currency industry. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration has opened another probe against the plane maker Boeing. The FAA is investigating the inspection process of the Boeing 787 Dreamliner jets. The aviation regulator says that some of Boeing's employees falsified inspection records. The regulator plans to probe all 787 airplanes in Boeing's production facilities. Steward Health, an American hospital chain, has filed for bankruptcy. Steward Health operates 31 hospitals in eight states and employs over 30,000 people. The firm has been facing financial challenges for some time now. Earlier this year, Steward had to close some of its hospitals to cut costs. The European Union has approved the merger of US Steel and Japan's Nippon Steel. The EU noted that the merger will not thwart market competition in its market. That's because both firms have limited market positions in Europe. However, US Steel and Nippon's merger plan faces mounting challenges in the US. Microsoft is reportedly working on a new artificial intelligence model called MAI-1. It's expected to complete, compete with Google's Gemini and OpenAI's ChatGPT. The AI model is being developed under the leadership of Mustafa Suleiman, who was recently hired from the AI startup Inflection. iPhone maker Apple is reportedly working on a new chip. The chip is being developed to run the firm's artificial intelligence software in data centers. It's expected to be uh, first be used in the company's own servers. Apple is also expected to announce new AI-powered products during its flagship event in June. Amazon plans to invest nearly $9 billion in Singapore over the next four years. This is to expand its cloud computing infrastructure in the country. Meanwhile, Amazon has also announced a partnership with the country's government. The firm will help Singapore accelerate the adoption of artificial intelligence and generative AI. Now on to sports news. As usual, we start with cricket and the Indian Premier League. Mumbai Indians beat Sunrise, Sunrisers Hyderabad by seven wickets yesterday. The match was played at Mumbai's Wankhede Stadium. Mumbai won the toss and opted to bowl first. Travis Head and Pat Cummins helped propel Hyderabad to a total of 130, uh, 173 for eight in their 20 overs. But Mumbai managed to chase down this target. Surya Kumar Yadav smashed a century of just 51 deliveries to help Mumbai win the match. Uganda have unveiled their 15-member squad for the upcoming T20 World Cup. Brian Masaba will captain the squad in its first T20 World Cup appearance. The team also includes 43-year-old Frank Nsubuga, who will be one of the oldest players in the squad. Uganda take on Afghanistan in their T20 World Cup campaign opener. The West Indies, who are the co-hosts for the T20 World Cup, have received a terror threat. The ICC, or International Cricket Council, asserted that strong security plans are in place. Cricket West Indies said that everything is being done to ensure foolproof security. The West Indies will be hosting the entire Super 8 stage, along with the semi-finals and the final on June 29th. Pakistan's cricket board has announced a cash prize for each player if Pakistan wins the upcoming T20 World Cup. Chairman Mohsin Nakhvi said each player will be awarded 100,000 US dollars. Pakistan's first match is against the USA in Texas on the 6th of June. In football, Crystal Palace trounced Manchester United 4-0 in the English Premier League yesterday. Michael Olise scored the opener in the 12th minute of play. 
Palace doubled their lead through Jean-Philippe Mateta just five minutes before half-time. It didn't get any better for United after the first, uh, in the second half. A goal by Tyreek Mitchell in the 58th minute made it 3-0. A few minutes later, Olise uh, bagged his second to subject the Red Devils to a 4-0 defeat. Footballer Paul Pogba is set to star in a French film that will release in April 2025. The movie is called Quatre Zeros and is a sequel to the successful Trois Zeros released in 2002. Pogba is a Football World Cup winner, but in February he was given a four-year ban for doping. Pogba says that he didn't deliberately consume any banned substance and will appeal the ruling. Meanwhile, West Ham United have announced that they will be parting ways with their manager, David Moyes. Moyes will leave the club after his contract expires at the end of this season. The 61-year-old was at West Ham for the 2017-2018 season. He returned for a second spell at the club in 2019. In tennis, 22-time Grand Slam champion Rafael Nadal will face a qualifier in the first round of the Italian Open. Nadal is in the same quarter of the draw as second seed and 2023's champion Daniel Medvedev. The pair could meet in the quarterfinals should they both reach that stage. The men's world number two, Italy's Yannick Sinner, has said that he will compete at the French Open only if he gets 100% fit. Sinner had earlier announced that he would drop out of his home tournament, the Italian Open. It was because he failed to recover from a right hip injury, which forced him to retire from the Madrid Open last week. Sinner had said that he would be out of action for over a week. Ukraine's former Olympian weightlifter Oleksandr Pylyshenko has been killed in the Russia-Ukraine war. He participated at the Rio Games in 2016 and finished fourth in the 85kg light heavyweight category. The two-time European weightlifting champion joined the Ukrainian army in 2022. Pylyshenko was killed in action on Sunday. This has been confirmed by the National Olympic Committee of Ukraine. In entertainment news, the green and beige carpets were rolled out in New York for the Met Gala 2024. Celebrities like Zendaya, Doja Cat and Gigi Hadid were in attendance. The theme this year was Sleeping Beauty's reawakening fashion. Attendees were asked to follow a dress code dubbed Garden of Time. Meanwhile, here's a look at the Indian and Indian origin representation at this year's Met Gala. Business person Isha Ambani stunned in a hand-embroidered hand sari by designer Rahul Mishra. Actor Alia Bhatt also wore a sari, a custom-designed mint green one by the designer Sabya Sachi. Bridgerton star Simone Ashley walked the red carpet in a navy blue outfit by designer Prabal Gurang. Actor-producer Mindy Kaling wore an outfit by Gaurav Gupta that is being compared to Ashwarya Rai's Khan, uh, Khan outfit from 2022. Actor Coleman Domingo honored the memory of the late actors uh, Chadman, uh, Chadwick Boseman and Andre Leon Talley at the Met Gala. Domingo paid tribute through his outfit for the event. He wore a cape that extended from his jacket with a pair of wide-legged pants. Domingo said both Boseman and Talley wore capes when they were at the Met Gala. The South Korean boy band BTS has been accused of chart rigging. Reports say an investigation has been ordered. The allegations date back to 2015 when BTS's agency HYBE used expedient marketing strategies to promote the band's album. The album's name is The Most Beautiful Moment in Life Part 1. The agency is accused of artificially inflating the sales figures of the 2015 album. Britney Spears might have to undergo foot surgery. She took to Instagram to share that something serious has happened to her foot. This comes a week after the pop star revealed that she twisted her ankle in Los Angeles. Spears was spotted walking out of a hotel barefoot and in just a bedsheet. 
singer Camila Caballo has announced the release date for her new album. The upcoming album, titled CXOXO, will release on June 28th. She already launched a single from the album in March. The single is called I Love It. Cabello also performed the song at the Coachella Music Festival. This month, Billie Eilish will host two music listening parties in New York and in Los Angeles. She'll be performing songs from her upcoming album. Fans have been urged to use public transportation or carpool to the event in a bid to reduce greenhouse gas pollution. The album is titled Hit Me Hard and Soft and will release on May 17th. James Gunn has shared the first look of David Corinsweet as the Man of Steel. Corinsweet can be seen wearing the new Superman suit for the 2025 film. The outfit appears withered and beaten down, hinting at high-octane action sequences in the film. Vin Diesel will start shooting for Riddick Furia in August this year. He will reprise his role as Richard B. Riddick in the fourth installment of the franchise. The film will be shot in locations like Germany, Spain and the UK. Actor Pankaj Tripathi's international film Mango Dreams is all set to release in India. It will release on an OTT platform on the 16th of May. The film had earlier been shown at a series of film festivals. The story features Tripathi as an auto rickshaw driver who embarks on a journey with a friend to find an old house. That's all for this episode of Fast and Factual. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to First Post. From impeachments to inaugurations, if it's a political story, we are on the scene. The race for the White House is heating up. We're beating Biden. How dare he say that? If it's breaking news, we're live with the latest coverage. From the White House, the State Department, and Capitol Hill, we know the issues, but above all, we know the players to bring you the latest in-depth analysis on all the key stories that we're covering. I'm Eric Ham. Join me from Washington here on First Post America.